Hi, my name is Shristi and welcome to day 15 of the 30-day Mean Stack Honolulu Challenge. Um, day 15, that's very exciting. We're halfway through the challenge. So today we're going to continue working through the customers pages and we're going to go back, have a quick look at the wireframes. Um, and I want to focus today on uh, these two pages in particular. So the list of customers um, and the place where we can then launch the creation of a new customer. So this is the view on a on a mobile, and this is the tablet, desktop, TV kind of um, kind of view. Now, before we um, can really start to to start hacking away at the code, let's have a look at what the Yeoman generator has already set up for us in terms of listing out our customers. So we do that. We just go across to the app. I've just got. Um, localhost 3000 open here um, and if you recall what we uh, went, when we went through the yeoman generator we set up our customers menu and we had sort of two options so we've already checked out the new customer option today we're going to have a look at the list customers option now when we go to this view what um, what's actually happening and what's what's actually being displayed here well the way we can find that out is by going over to our code and having a look at the route. So we're in this customers route. So I'm going to go to config, go to client routes, and um, and just have a look at this customers route, which is this one here. The template URL that's being referred to is list customers. So I'll go down to views and just open up list customers. Okay, so let's just have a bit of a look through this code. Um, what we've got is the a reference to our customer's controller, so that's good. And next to that, we've got a bit of code that um, has a reference to this find function. Now, in sort of a nutshell, what, what this is doing for us is it's sort of saying that when, when someone navigates to this particular view, use the customer's controller and make all the functions that that controller has make them available to this view and also just call or just initiate the find function all right well what's the find function all about let's go and have a quick look at that so if we go to the customers controller let's have a look at the different functions so we've got create uh, we've got remove we've got update and here we go we've got find now, when we look at this find function, there's really only one line of code here, but it's a very, very powerful function. So how does it kind of work? Well, on the right hand side, we've got a bit of, line, a, a bit of code that says customers.query. Okay, well, if that doesn't look familiar to you, the customers part might, because what that is, is a reference to our customers factory, which is available to our customers controller. Okay, cool. So if I looked at that customers function, uh, sorry, that customers factory, what I'm trying to do is call something called query. So if I jump across to the service where the customers, so that's our customers factory lives, there's no reference here to query. That's okay because query is actually something that's part of this concept of a resource. So there's a few things that this these sort of few lines of code do that aren't necessarily all that apparent. And um, allowing us to perform a query is one of those. All right, so I'm not gonna find too much information here. Let's work up a step and have a look at the routes on the app. So I'm gonna jump up to the, the folder for the app and go down to routes and we go to the customer server routes. Okay, so there's a couple of things going on here. We know that there's two key routes. We've got the customers, and then when we're looking at an individual customer, we've got this second route here. Now we know that we're on the customers view, right? So if we just go back, we see we've got that customer right at the top, which matches this one here. Now there's a couple of things happening here. There's um, a, a, when a route, when this particular route gets called, which is for customers, um, we can perform a get or we can perform a post. Now, what's the difference between a get and a post? Now, so every time we want to create a new record um, or re retrieve data from the database, we have these kind of funny terms around 
gets and posts and puts and deletes and so on and so forth. But when we want to retrieve data from a database, so we want to just um, bring that back and make that available to the view, what we need to do is perform a get. So what when I go to this particular route, I perform a get, which is implying that I want to get some data back from the database. The function that I want to initiate is the customers dot list function. Well, let's have a look at what that is. So again, we know we're dealing with customers um, and we know that the reference there implies a reference back to the customer server controller. So let's go and find that. And we go to customers, sorry, go to app, we go to controllers and we go to customer server control. So let's have a quick look through the functions that we've got here. So we've got create, we've got read, we've got update, we've got delete. Oh, and here we go. We've got a function here for list. So what's what's happening in this particular function? Well, you see here that it, it's got this concept of a customer find. So remember customer, if you look up here, is a reference to our mongoose model. So that's mongoose tying together our rules and our model. And it then goes on to perform this find um, and as part of performing the find, when data is returned, it's this particular code is actually using Mongoose to tell MongoDB that you want to perform the find, we want to grab data back, we want to sort it by the created date, and we want to populate um, for references of the user field, so the user who created the record, we want to populate their display name. So we don't want that to be static text. We want whatever the display name is of that user at that point in time. And then we want to go ahead and execute the query. Now, these particular um, kind of functions or functionality is all MongoDB related functions. And you can find that information on the MongoDB website. So I'll show you how that kind of works. So if I go across to MongoDB, so mongodb.org, and just go down to querying. So wait till that opens up. This page, is, this page, and many of the pages kind of around um, around the query documents go into quite a lot of detail about how, how the find function works, the types of things that you can pass in, um, the types of responses that can be returned, um, how you can do queries for you know, greater than something or less than something, if you want only certain um, number of records to come back, all of those um, kind of nitty gritty querying uh, kind of functions, they all can be found over um, on MongoDB. So if you, um, if you can't find it here, Mongoose um, has quite a good set of documentation as well. So between those two, most of your querying um, issues should be resolved. So just jumping back. So now that we know that what this list function is doing is going and grabbing or getting our, um, our data from uh, MongoDB, what is, what, once it's got that data, if there's no errors, it's passing it back to our app um, in a response which is made up of um, JSON data and it's passing that through um, as, as customers. So when we then go back to our controller, what we then do is we, we grab the JSON data that's coming back and we put that into this scope of customers. So when we then look back at the app, and I'm just going to inspect element, and I'm going to go to um, the Batarang view, so just over to AngularJS. When I have a look at the scope, I can see that see the data in that JSON structure that's being returned from the server. So even though this data isn't displayed on the UI, I know that it's there and it's behind the scenes. And what this also means is if I want to get access to a particular field from this structure, then I need to refer to it using um, the, the, the attributes of the model. So for example, if I wanted to display somewhere on this page um, our customer's first name, I literally need to type in our customer dot first name. Well, let me show you that as an example. So if I go to 
the list customers client view where as we as we um, repeat through our list of customers which is what this is doing here so it's looking at customer in customers and customers is that uh, whoops over here that scope of customers um, what I can then do is actually just display here in double curly brackets customer dot if I just go back and show you again so it's customer which is that headline there and then oops first name and just save that just letting that refresh you can see there that we've now got Ali on made available on our view so that's a really really easy way any anything that I want to do now if I'm referring to the customers angular model I can refer to it using the structure that's made available and using Batarang simplifies this process quite a lot because you're not guessing to identify well what structure do I need to use when I'm referring to first name okay so that's all good and well but I'm not overly convinced with how this structure is actually working. So in the next video, in tomorrow's video, we're going to change this up a little bit and start working through um, the customer's controller, but actually splitting it out into separate controllers. Um, and I'll show you why I want to do that um, and how um, I want to get rid of this ng initiate directive. Um, at the top of this page. So that's where I'm going to leave it here today. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out bossable.com for more details. But we'll pick it up right from here. See you tomorrow.